Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, this is Lithium017 from my channel, Nintendo Collecting 101, bringing you collecting tip number 58. This one's called shipping. If you're a collector and you're a hardcore collector, eventually you're going to be buying items online or doing trades internationally, buying items from out of the country or even from within the country, but not in person, so you will need to deal with shipping. So this tip's going to talk about Obviously, the two different kinds of shipping, both receiving and sending out items. So first things first, let's talk about when you're actually buying items. The best way to buy items for shipping is obviously free shipping. So if the seller on eBay or on Amazon or wherever it is is offering free shipping, that is excellent. But keep in mind, if they offer free shipping, maybe they're not actually putting the item in a box. So if you're buying a game such as this, Mario Party 2, who doesn't love Mario Party 2, if they say free shipping and then it comes in an envelope, and in the envelope you get it and it's bent like this, doesn't fit very well because they want to offer free shipping at a really low rate, it was jammed, other things were on top of it, lots of weight breaking it down. So if you do get free shipping, ask how is it going to come, obviously when is it going to arrive. So when you're dealing with shipping, the main things are obviously the size of the item, the weight of the item, and obviously where is it coming from, and when do you want it by. So it can obviously come really quickly. You can get it express shipping, and that's a lot more expensive. Then it can be air shipping, with obviously in a plane, or it can be sal shipping, which is surface shipping, basically. Or if it's from overseas, it's obviously just coming by boat. The price goes up the faster you want the item, so you need to kind of gauge, I think, how rare is the item to me or how much does the item actually mean to me. So for example, this box here is a yellow and orange Pokemon console from Japan. So this one is quite rare. I found it at a reasonable price, exactly what I kind of wanted to pay for it, and when I was going to pay for the item for shipping, I was deciding do I want it, you know, in a week? Do I want it in a month or do I want it several months from now? And I decided this is not something that I want right away. Yes, it is a rare console. I do want it insured, but I don't want it right away. So what I had them do is send it to me Sal, and I saved maybe half the price shipping. Sal means surface shipping in a boat from Japan. So it took maybe two and a half months to get here, but I saved myself 30 or $40 getting it to myself in Canada. So that's a great way to save money. Now, if it's something that you really care about and you really want in your collection, or just say, for example, it's a game that you want to play ASAP, like Xenoblade Chronicles, one of the best games on the Wii. You want to get it and you want to play it right away, or you want to get it for a birthday or for Christmas, you might want to play pay express shipping no matter where it's coming from. Other things you obviously want to keep in mind is combined shipping. So if you're buying several items, so just say, for example, I want to buy this lime green or extreme green limited edition Nintendo 64 controller, and it looks fantastic, and I want combined shipping because I also bought a kind of rare game, StarCraft 64, that is pretty terrible on the N64. They could combine these, they could put them in the same box and bundle them up like this, but you might want to ask the seller, can you just open this box and can you make this game fit in any way safely inside of that box? Then the shipping really shouldn't change that much, the size will be the same, just the weight will increase a little bit, but at least they will both fit in the same thing. You also want to ask, how are you shipping them in the box? Are you shipping them with other heavy items? So this is a box of a Kirby figure, and when I got this, it was somehow opened. I don't know how it opened. They said it was sealed, and it was really beat up. The box was dented, and what happened was he sold, or he shipped it with something that was really heavy in the box. So say, for example, this clay Ness figure from Earthbound. If that was in the same box, it's really heavy. Maybe they were flopping around or the packaging wasn't that tight and it damaged the box. And I'm a collector. I like my boxes to be minty when they come, not somehow ripped open and dented. So I did get some money back for that. So you want to make sure you ask how are you shipping them to make sure that the seller is shipping them in a way that won't damage the items and you may want to pay a bit more money for that. So you might go to calculate shipping and you realize, oh, it should only cost $11 to get an item to me. 
why is shipping $15? Well, that's because they need the box, they need the supplies, they need to take the time to ship them all or put them in the box. They wanna make sure it's secure and they also have to drive to the store and then actually ship it or drive to Canada Post or whatever it is that they ship it from. So there's lots to keep in mind when other people are shipping and also keep in mind if you're getting something internationally, border fees. A lot of the times I do not get border fees from the States to Canada if it's under $40, $40. Bucks. If it's under $40, I don't get any border fees. If it's over $40, I might get border fees. And sometimes they may actually open the box to see what it is and damage my item. So you want to make sure the seller is very clearly stating what is in the box, what is in the item itself so that you don't get gypped and they don't rip it open or open a sealed game or something like that. The Xenoblade Chronicles is, uh, this is a sealed copy. I think I might just keep this one sealed because it's such a rare, expensive game. Okay, so now the flip side. What about if you're sending items and you're actually now shipping things out? It's a great idea now that you maybe took some items in and you received something shipping, you should probably keep some supplies. Supplies. So let's get this out of the way and let's move some stuff and I'll show you what I have as supplies at all times because I do have so much coming in. So let's move this and this. And by supplies, I don't mean very much. What are you going to need? Obviously, you're going to need some boxes. So I have a few boxes that I always have on hand and my mom's always kind of not yelling at me but thinking clean up the basement because I have these empty boxes lying around. And what else do I keep? You know those little the little foam pellets? I keep those because if I ever need to ship, those are really handy to kind of make them fit in the box. I also keep quite a bit of shipping tape because you never know when you might run out of shipping tape and you actually do need to bundle up an item. So I keep lots of that. I keep some envelopes and I do usually have envelopes with bubble wrap in them for shipping a singular game. Usually you can, they can fit and then you can actually ship it through the normal mail. And what else do I keep? Obviously I keep lots of bubble wrap. So I keep lots of bubble wrap to obviously ship the items too. And you may think this is just, you know, simple. And why are you even talking about this, lithium? You're stupid, we know this. But with shipping items, why pay money for bubble wrap? Why pay money for boxes? Why would you buy them from the actual shipping service when you have them already from other, you know, other shipments that you received? So when you're sending them, Number one, if you're selling on eBay or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're getting the actual cost of the seller and you probably want to charge an extra two or three dollars just for supplies, just for tape, just for taking the time to actually put it into the box and driving to the store and everything like that. So, you know, if it costs me $15 for shipping, I'm probably going to charge them $17 just to kind of cover myself a little bit more. And always keep in mind, always, always keep in mind that weight and size go into shipping. So the weight, I might not be able to change much, but the size, I certainly can. So what I've been doing recently is I will take a box like this, and what I will do is I will, you know, see how big the item is, and I will actually cut the box. I will cut the box down, and I will trim the box, or I will make a custom box to specifically fit that item, such as a controller. Because if you get a specific size box, it may not actually fit that well. Why would I ship this controller in such a big box? Look at this. I could fit like, I could fit a small cat in there instead. So what I will do is I will cut the box, I will edit the box to make it fit perfectly to save on shipping for myself and for the other person. So hopefully these were really helpful tips for shipping. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. The links are in the underbar and have a great day.